Good morning, good morning. How's everyone doing today? Is everyone fine? That's awesome, awesome. I can see some names that I remember from the last time. Thank you so much for, for attending this webinar. How is trading going? Are you currently in any trades? We're gonna go through. We just wait for about 15, 20 seconds. Some people, they are trying to open their, their computers, so. Okay, so let's get on to it. Just, uh, just before still alive, Vasilena still alive. <laughs> That's great. Just before we we continue, uh, this webinar it's for training and education purposes only. Okay, it doesn't uh, con it doesn't include any personal advice. Uh, all trading decisions that I show, I explain, it's purely based on uh, my interpretation about the market, about the way I read the charts, okay? Um, when you're gonna see me enter on the trade, doesn't mean that I'm telling you to get into the trade. If you think that it's a trade that uh, it, it, it's, it goes along with your trading style, you have all the right to uh, to act uh, on your best interest. So let's have a look at some news that they affected the market uh, the last few days. Uh, guys, I think that this way here, uh, by the way, just a check one more time. Can you see my screen? Can you see the drawing? I do a cross, I do some circles, just to make sure, please type a quick yes. If you can see the screen with the today high impact news. Yep, yep, yep. What about, what about you guys on uh, YouTube? Can you see my screen? Friday, Thursday. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Now, on Thursday, we had the Australian dollar trade balance, which they came out very, very strong. Here was the previous number. The forecast was uh, a bit of dropping down in the number, but surprisingly, the actual came out way stronger, okay? What does it mean for the Australian dollar? It means that uh, if the market will follow through, then we will see a strong Australian dollar. And when we go later to the charts, you will see that it was a strong Australian dollar. Now, you're gonna guys hear me saying at many times when I uh, read the news that if the market will follow through, why I say that? Because in my experience, and especially when I used to be a very, 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 very intense day trader, there are times when a positive outcome, it's favorable for a currency, but the market is not following through. And we don't see the chart showing the same expansion following the strength uh, of the of the announcement. For example, there are times that a positive outcome, a positive news, it doesn't reflect to the chart a strength in that in that currency. Excuse me. So all the time, I will I will say to you a positive outcome uh, in the news events, but if the market will follow through, okay something you're gonna you're gonna understand 
uh, down the track. Then yesterday we had the US dollar ADP employment change and it came, uh, it came down to uh, a negative number. So that impact negatively the, the US dollar. And when we go to the chart, you will see, do you remember when I, re when I said last time on Wednesday that always you have to look to find a strong currency and a weak currency. And if you trade them together, if you take that pair, then you have a high, high probability of not staying in the trade and, and it takes you sideways, okay? You have a high probability to experience a fast outcome, okay? And if you get it right, if you get the direction right, of course, most of the times, it's a higher probability to experience a positive outcome as well. So yesterday, uh, good trades, they've been around the US dollar and the Australian dollar, and actually this pair itself. Now, today, the focus for today, it's the first Friday of the month. For those you don't know it, every first Friday, we do have the non-farm payrolls. It's uh, one of the major events in the uh, Forex industry, and this many times determinate uh, how strong it's going to perform the US dollar or how weak it's going to perform in the next day, sometimes weeks as well. Okay, now, what do we have? Last time, last month, we have 400. 28,000. Now, we expect to have the forecast is a reduction in this number, so 325K. What does it mean? It means that if the outcome, which we're going to see it here at half past three uh, Cyprus time, <laughs> if we're going to see the outcome here uh, confirming the expectation and taking in consideration that two days ago we had another negative number in related to, to the event. So these two events most likely, again, if this is going to come as a negative, most likely they can determine a big drop in the US dollar. What does this mean for you again? You can go to any pair, either Euro USD or JPP USD. And if you have the appropriate trends or if you have the structure you're looking for, then the news are in your favor and you can execute for a high probability trade. Okay, now let's go to the charts. Let me bring the charts for you. Is anyone in current trade now just uh, do you have, guys, any questions in regards to this? Please let me know until I bring the charts on. Yes, pound yen, Vasilena, that's nice. In which time frame? Four hour chart, okay. Nice. Yeah, Bram has uh, an interesting question here. Uh, how will this affect gold? How will that affect the gold? Shouldn't it go up? Yes, always, uh, because the gold... By the way, guys, can you see my screen here? I changed screen just to make sure so I can show you on the charts. Please type a quick yes. Everyone see the screen, the charting screen here. I'm on Euro cut. Yes. Okay. So I take it as a confirmation from everybody that you can see the screen and I move forward. So let's go to the question Bern asked. So uh, does this have to affect the gold? If we go to the gold chart, of course, most of the times, guys, uh, a drop in the US dollar, it favorably 
push the gold price up because as we know the gold uh, is priced in, uh, in ounces and we measure them on US dollar, okay? Now, there are times lately I've noticed in the charts that sometimes they don't go as well as they supposed to push um, the gold and the WTI when we have negative US dollar news, okay? So it's not always 100% that it's gonna outperform, the gold is gonna outperform, but yes, most of the times uh, it performs accordingly, okay? Is that clear? Yep. Good morning for all you guys. You just join. I see your your messages. Don't get me wrong. I don't instantly reply. Yep. And indicators. Alexandro is asking if I do have indicators on this chart. No, this chart has no indicators. Uh, I used to use a lot the MACD. MACD, the moving average conversion divergence. And the only reason I used to use it before when I start trading, because I would like to see the divergence between indicator and price, uh, because I was taking a lot of trade. I still take trades with divergence. It's just my eye now, it's just picking up. My eyes picks up instantly when I see divergence, like this one here. I don't need to have the MACD, but I know for sure that if you put the MACD uh, 9 to 24 set settings, you're gonna see guys here that you have a divergence in price. And then here you're gonna have a second divergence in price. You're gonna have waves like this. Let me show you here. You're gonna have waves like this. Uh, So you have equal low here and you have a higher low here and then you have another higher low here. That's why uh, I used to have the indicators, but now no, I don't have the indicators for this reason. Uh, let's get this out. So we're gonna go to this example later. Let's start from the pound USD. What do we have here? If we go to the weekly chart, we can see that the market is still in a downtrend, okay, making lower lows and lower highs. So now we are in a counter trend trade on the downtrend. So if we go to the daily chart, we can see that uh, here, we have now equal highs. So for the daily, this is, a, it's forming an option. I'm not gonna say it is an option because it is not, we don't have a higher high and a higher low. You know, in an option, we need to have a higher high. We need to have a higher low. And then uh, this is a val this is an established uptrend. So we wait for the pullback for those who are trading pullbacks like myself. So slowly, slowly, I will tell you how I'm trading as well. So you will, you will understand. I trade the pullbacks. So uh, if this is going to follow through and it's going to make a success impulse move here, I'm going to wait for the pullback to find an entry somewhere along a trend line or maybe uh, here, if the price is going to come here as a double bottom, for example, according to this uh, level of support. And I find the price action like an engulfing or a pin bar, then I'm ready to go to the upside. Okay. So for now, really, there are not much things to play around. Remember that yesterday we have uh, a week. US dollar based on the news as well. The market follow through, the traders position themselves. Uh, so this one, yes, we can see a weakness in US dollars, in US dollar along the board. Okay, if we go to the four hour chart. What I like here on the four hour is that this 
trend line which it's um it's a it's a minor uh correction on the four hour it broke okay and uh, it broke quite nicely all this all this bearishness they've been exhausted by the bullishness so far we can see this massive candle here and some can expect that where all these sellers uh, are now in the market where are they why they don't follow through but buyers they successfully push the price uh, higher so what can we expect we expect to see a rally on the pound usd and that's where the thing become a bit tricky and it's something i'm going to host a webinar on mondays specifically about this event guys is this chart it's going to move up because the pound is strong and it's overtaking the us dollar or is this chart it's going to push higher if it's going to push higher because the us dollar is so weak across the board and it cost the pound to just push higher that's a very 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 important question and that comes down to uh, some deep understanding of the market if you understand that now what we've experienced so far and what we expect to see today it's a weakness in the us dollar so if you go to any pair here you will see that the us dollar was weak yesterday and the rest they push higher you see that this engulfing candle the the white bullish candle here so it means that the market push higher so we have similar pattern with the pound usd but you can see if you observe a bit closer you will see that this white candle it's still on the inside of this on the inside of this bearish candle can you see that so it didn't push higher the white candle yesterday it didn't manage to close higher than the the bearish candle but we can see on the euro usd that yesterday let me just move this away yesterday can you see that the white candle took the high and close higher than the the blue candle so the buyers on the euro usd they were more aggressive and they pushed price higher so how can you use this information you can use it that pound is not that strong at least as far as we can see here on the chart is not as strong as euro so most likely if you're going to go to the pair uh euro uh jbp you will see that the euro it was performing better yesterday okay uh if you go to the australian dollar usd do you remember what we said yesterday about the news event that the they came very positively and the market also followed through look at this bullish candle here so it means that uh the australian dollar was much 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 stronger than anything else the us dollar was very weak across the board and that it was the best candidate to work with yesterday if you were trading yesterday okay so let's go back to the euro usd to finish our analysis and see for possible setups coming now again I'm going down to the weekly. I see here that there is a long term downtrend. If you guys can see this one, it starts from here. It makes lower low, lower low, lower highs, lower low. And it's been quite a long time since the middle of 2021. We had a downtrend uh, on the Euro USD. So, what, what I do next, I go to the daily chart 
and I see that on the daily chart, we have a successive higher high and we broke the structure of this minor trend line. So what does it tell me? It tells me that we have room to push higher. Okay, however, we have this obstacle here. We have an obstacle which is a strong area of support. It was support, it was support. Finally it broke, the support broke. Oh, okay. The support broke and now we most likely will experience it as a resistance level. So if you want to buy here, or if you go down to the four hour, which you can find more tight entries, okay? So what can you see here? That we are very, very close to this resistance level now. So how can we play this? If you see, I mark, uh, I mark my charts with these lines. Let's just get rid of them. So how I'm gonna wait, uh, to play this pair, I'm gonna wait for either a break of this resistance because on that resistance, most likely there will be many orders sitting there, many uh, some, many buy stops and many uh, sell limits order to take traders accordingly to what they believe it's gonna happen next. Now, again, if we combine the, um, the news that we are expecting even weaker US dollar. So most likely we're gonna experience a lift on this pair. So if we're gonna have a, a break above this, this area here, if you want, I can bring it down here to be on the last swing high. If we have a break above here, then I'm gonna wait for uh, a correction. We don't know if the correction is gonna come deep or if it's gonna be just, uh, Steeper, okay, somewhere here, we don't know. Ideally, I would like a, co a deep correction uh, to, to come down to the last broken swing. And then I will be looking to buy it uh, for a nice setup. Okay, that's how I'm planning on this trade. But for now, because I'm not a breakout trader, I'm just staying on the sidelines, okay? If you guys are trading breakouts and that's, uh, you buy, for example, here, you have a buy stop here, you have your stop somewhere there, and that's how you trade and that works for you most of the times, then just tick it in and go for it, okay? For me, it's not the ideal uh, setup for now because I, I like to trade only where I have room uh, to make a good trade. If I have too many obstacles, I just move to the next one, I just, wait for the market to give me an, an ideal market conditions. If we go to the Australian US dollar, we go to the weekly charts. Let me just get rid of this. We go to the weekly charts. We have this level of, uh, this level of support here, which is strong support. It hasn't broken since October, 2020. Okay, the market, uh, retest again in 2021, but it didn't broke through. So it's a strong level. Of course, at some point they break, all the levels they break, okay? They don't hold forever, but we are now, we see what the market is showing us and it shows recently a false breakout here. So then we go to the daily, we see our trend. We're trying to see if we have a trend structure or a market conditions that we identified as tradable. Here, it was a kind of steep uh, downtrend, downtrend line. It broke here with this massive bullish engulfing. It was an ideal trade, entered here, stop there. You're still in a trade if you are trading this type of uh, trades. If not, you can go down to the four hour. You can see your higher highs, higher lows. Let's go back to that structure, okay? The market it make here, it make a success higher high to break through these levels. It retest here with a very, very nice solid uh, pattern staying above the last swing highs. 
you could buy here, you have a tidy stop there, you are three, four, two, one, and ready to go. Uh, also a good trade, it was yesterday here, for those who took it, I will take this trend line here. We have this trend line, okay, why I take this trend line, guys, because that's where we see the market is making the first higher highs. Usually I use the trend lines not to structure the market, I just use them to see the actual trend or higher highs and higher lows or lower highs and lower lows. Okay, so higher high here, we have uh, some touches, close the touches, sorry, I didn't draw it very well, so let me make it a bit accurate. So that was the second one. We have a third touch here, okay? Yesterday, this bullish engulfing with a positive event of uh, the Australian dollar, it was a great entry. It will give you uh, almost two to one, okay? After this pin bar here, you could uh, wait it as a, a valid correction most likely to start. So you could be out of the trade, okay? It took you one, two, three, uh, less than a day and you are in a good profit. Uh, some people, they, of course, they just take partial profits. They put their stop, they move their stop to break even and they leave the trade for, for longer time. Again, depends on the uh, risk management rules you have. Then we go to the USD JPY. Here, if you recall, we said that we are in a big uptrend, a strong uptrend here. The market is making a higher high, although this is a very, very, very uh, long impulse move, which we know from experience that in the Forex market, uh, this kind of impulses moves, they retrace at some point, okay, at the least to 38 to 50%, to 61.8% Fibonacci. <coughs> excuse me, before they resume. Uh, okay, where in, in stocks, we ex we don't experience it in such a deep retracements, okay, if the market is strong. So what we have here, we see that uh, so far a small correction, now the price is pushing higher. If we go to the daily chart, we see that we broke through, as we said the last time, we break through this, um, correction trend line now the market is inclining yesterday we have an inside bar after this strong buying pressure uh, what did we happen today we don't know i'm staying on the sideline because usd it show weakness if the reason this pair is moving it's going to move higher it's because the jpy most likely it's even weaker than the US dollar. So two weak pairs. I don't trust this type of market condition. So I stay on the sideline. If you go down to the four hour chart though, we are still hovering around this resistant area. So a good trade could be somewhere here, even this pin bar here. This pin bar here will be a great trade. You enter, you have your stop and then you take your profit somewhere around these highs or you manage your trade accordingly and you are still in the trade, okay? It depends what your risk management rules are. So uh, I'm gonna wait for the price to come here. And then if I see a reversal here, and if you put, if you are trading divergence and you put your MACD indicator, you will see that uh, most likely you're gonna have this type of divergence talking about this and this and then this one here okay so it's reversal divergence uh they are high probability trades of course with the according price action and you can use it in your advantages let's go to the pound yen so pound yen we said the last time that it was a spectacular trade from this area here where it was uh, it's a clear text example price push higher, impulse move, push, 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 push back, pull back. So you go to the daily charts, 
or the four hour charts and you find your catalyst and there you go in the trade. Now, how can we play this today? We can see that the market broke through this trend line uh, and now it makes a solid higher high. So we cannot just jump here and buy this uh, enter here and put your stop here. I don't see it as a very valid trade, at least today, because first, it's the last Friday, it's um, it's the last day of, of the week. Uh, with that uncertain in the world right now, I don't like to hold uh, pairs that they don't have good strength or weakness against each other for long period, okay? So for this one here, I prefer to see a pullback and then go on the four hour chart or on the daily chart. If I see a small range of price action, reversal price action, I'll take it on the daily or I will go down to the four hour chart, which I like to use the time frame correlation to participate in the trends. Like you see here, we have this pullback here. Now the market make a higher high. So I will wait for the price to come somewhere here if it's going to come. And at that stage, if uh, we'll apply to my entry rules, I will not hesitate to take the trade. I will target this highs here if I have at least two to one or three to one room to move. Okay. So let's go to the euro again. We said that euro was performing better than the pound. So uh it's on my watch list however now we are on the weekly chart if you see guys we are here on a strong level of resistance so the daily chart it's still in an impulse move here if someone took the trend line here for this correction phase and you go down to the four hour you could easily see that the market make a nice higher high here nice higher high here, it pulled back text to example with a pin bar here, you enter, you have your stop below on the pin bar or wherever you put your stop because this was a retest and rejection of this uh, previous resistance and now support area. So if you enter here, you put your stop there, there you are, you made a nice two and a half to one, you could be out of the trade right now, I don't know if you, if you were watching this type of uh, market conditions and if you are taking this type of trade, but I'm telling you these are lucrative uh, trades, higher highs, higher low, break, retest, find a pin bar or a bullish engulfing if you are going uh, for an uptrend and just exit and let the market uh, show you the result. So Euro, Canadian dollar. Again, on the weekly chart, we have this level of support here okay so for me it's a good enough reason to look for longs and that's what i've done recently i went down to the one hour chart uh, again here we had the divergence and a bullish engulfing that was a recent entry that was a stop two to one was up to here and then out of the trade okay now i was looking to short from here, to be honest, I was looking to go short. I didn't find my catalyst on this time frame. Then now I'm answering also a question someone asked me last Wednesday. Sorry, I forget your name. Uh, where I execute the trade? So I found my catalyst on the daily chart, which it was the bullish engulfing on this example. I entered here. I had the stop. I had the two to one risk reward, so it was a valid trade to take. Then on the four hour chart, I was trying to find my catalyst somewhere here, but unfortunately I didn't find it. So I didn't take the trade. Now, as I said last time, I don't like to come here and take the trades in the middle of the range. That bearish engulfing, it was uh, one of the best setups I always look to find for, and this one was one of the best for two reasons. First, I think it's better if I zoom in as much as possible. So first guys, this one here, as you can see, 
It's a bearish engulfing. But prior to the bearish engulfing, we had this pin bar, which suggested it reject the lower price here. It left the tail and it suggests that buyers are in control. And then immediately the next session, we have this bearish engulfing candle fully closed, take the low and, uh, and in a downtrend, Oh my God, that was a that was a lucrative trade. However, for me, that wasn't in a in a valid market conditions because we are within uh, within a daily range, and on the weekly we just came from this strong support area. Okay, so I was a bit skeptical to take trades down here now. Why I'm not taking a trade at this area here? I wanted, I had another setup yesterday to go for short, and that was this bearish engulfing from this retest level of resistance. I didn't take the trade because we are very close to this bottom here. I don't know how the market is going to react. And as I said uh, in the previous webinar, I prefer to take only from the edges that my trades. Okay, when we are in the range, when we are in a clear trend, absolutely, I'm going and I take the trade with the trend. Uh, but when we stack in a higher time frame range, I just prefer to execute from the edges if I have the right catalyst, okay? Doesn't mean that if I don't have the right catalyst, the market is not gonna do its thing. No, the market is gonna move where it has to move regardless, all right? Now let's go to, so for now I'm on the sidelines unless the price comes down here uh, to look for, for longs. Pound cut, let's go to the weekly. You can see here that we are retesting these lows on the weekly, which on the daily. Uh, now, if you apply the MACD here, you will clearly see divergence. Now, why I'm not taking this inside bar, guys? It's because uh, I've seen that the pound is not as strong in the market right now. So uh, I don't want to go and buy the pound right now, especially with the Canadian dollar, uh, I prefer to buy the Euro cut. You see the structure here, it didn't even come all the way down to the support, but the pound cut, it's so weak, the pound came all the way down to the support. Do you see how, um, how I read uh, the market in, in general as a concept? Uh, Pierre said, please, Euro, Euro Yen for hour. Yeah, we talked about Euro Yen for hour. Is that okay? We said about that one. We are on the sidelines now. Pound cut, we talk about pound cut, Euro Australian dollar. That's an interesting Euro Australian dollar. We have the weekly chart here, it made a lower low. It came here to retest this broken support, which acted as a resistance. If you go to the a few weeks ago, you could go down to the daily chart. Up here we are, down to the daily chart. This retest here was uh, a good enough reason to go on the short side. However, Lately, we experience about the strength of the euro and the Australian dollar. Now, yesterday, Australian dollar was strong. Also, euro shows some strength across the board, euro cut and euro pound. So we have two pairs, the one uh, trying to outperform the other. Both of them are equally strong. Sorry, not equally strong. The one is a bit stronger than the other. However, is it a high probability trade to try and trade too strong or too weak pairs? I don't think so. So if we go down now, we are currently on a push lower. Yesterday, we see the market open here. It got down, trying to push higher. The sellers push the market lower and they close here. 
today, surprisingly, the market got down and the buyers are in control. We had such a strong Australian dollar yesterday, but is losing strength against the euro. So which one is stronger now? I wouldn't go and touch this pair today, to be honest. Okay, but if that's in your trading uh, methodology and your plan, by all means, you can even you go to the four hour chart. And if you have your higher highs, higher lows, if you are taking trades from here to the short side, uh, you can you can do it. I wouldn't do that, to be honest, today, regardless of the outcome. Maybe this is going to fall off, it's going to sell off, and it's going to give a great trading result, but it doesn't apply to my rules. Okay, so pound, pound us, we are approaching at this uh, strong support, which they are many orders uh, will be sitting here. Uh, in my experience, the market at many times, it's going to try to push lower here. Maybe it's going to close lower and the next day it's going to push higher. But because of the most likely weakness of the pound, we can experience a bit of, if the, if the Australian dollar is not going to outperform, then we're going to experience something like sideways. Unless something changes and the pound is going to take control. Otherwise, we will definitely wait for a push lower here, a rejection, and then to find a catalyst on the daily or on the four hour to go for longs. Okay, because we see that Australian dollar, the uh, last period is performing quite, quite well. The gold, we are hovering around these uh, areas here. So I wouldn't touch it. It's a bit of mix. Uh, it was going down with lower lows. Now it comes equal highs. Uh, it doesn't give me any. Uh, any clear indication. Okay, what do you think about Australian Canadian dollar? Let's go to just have a look. Aussie cut. Do we have Aussie cut here? Aussie cut. Let's do the Aussie cut and we've done for today because I took it a little bit longer. Uh, Okay, Australian cut. Okay, so we are here. We came from the weekly from this support. The market is pushing higher. If we go on the daily chart, guys, this is a big, a big mess here. The market, one, two, three, four, five, it's been a couple of weeks. The market is drifting around. And the reason is because both Australian dollar and Canadian dollar, they are quite strong in the market now. Okay, so... It's not a pair I will touch. Even if you go to the four hour, it's gonna be just swing sideways. Okay, if you are this, this is very steep. Actually, that's a very good example to talk about uh, just for 30 seconds about sideways and, and ranging market. This, this range is very steep. It's very uh, small for, for a good two to one or three to one trades, okay? Uh, so I will just stay out of this one. And again, that's my opinion. That's how I review the market. That's how I look the trades. Okay. So, uh, guys, thank you so much. Can you follow setups during the day? For now, William, unfortunately, I don't follow setups for during the day because I just started the webinars. We will see with the company how we're going to do it. And we will definitely will let you know about something. We are here to do what's on your best interest. Okay. And uh, guys, sorry, I took it a bit extent today. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate your, your support. I appreciate I hope you gain a lot of value today. Looking forward to see you on Monday. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a great trading day and have a nice weekend. Bye for now.